Hey, 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 awesome people. Mr. C back with another fractions video. Make sure if you learn anything new at all, click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. This video is going to be about subtracting mixed numbers with like denominators with regrouping. And we are going to be using the standard strategies in this video. This will be the teaching video, all right? In the description below, you will find the practice problems video when you're ready for it. You'll also find all of our fourth grade fractions and mixed numbers third grade fractions and second grade fractions playlists. They are all linked in the description below. All right. This video again is going to be our teaching video for subtracting mixed numbers with like denominators with regrouping using the standard strategies. Let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you already know what I'm about to say, but we are going to say it anyway because at Math of Mr. C, having a growth, growth mindset is super, super important. If you don't have a growth mindset, things are going to be such a challenge in math. Remember, a growth mindset means that just because you don't know something, it just means you don't know it yet. All right, you persevere, you ask questions. You try the problems and you use your mistakes to help you get better. When we make a mistake, we don't give up. Our mistakes help us get better, okay? So, here we go. I've got a strategy here that you're probably looking at and thinking to yourself, Mr. C, I think I've seen this strategy before. And you are 100% correct, people. You have seen this strategy before. The only difference is you haven't seen this strategy when we've had to regroup. But that's something that's really cool about regrouping is you've already learned how to regroup. If you've ever taken a number like this and subtracted, then you've regrouped. You know what that looks like. So all I'm going to do is show you how to regroup if you have a mixed number. All right. One thing I do want to point out is if you did not watch the video on models on how to solve mixed numbers subtraction with regrouping using models, make sure you check that out because our goal here at Math and Mr. C isn't just for you to know how to solve this. Our goal is that you can see what you are solving. Okay, so here we go. We've got four and one third minus one and two thirds. And you'll notice I have everything lined up, whole numbers and fractions. And when we subtract this, we're gonna start on the right, just like we always do. So one third minus two thirds. Can we do that? If you have one third, can you give me two thirds? No, you can't. So what should we do? Well, we are going to regroup. What are we going to regroup? We're going to regroup this whole number four. We're going to take one whole from it, and that's going to become three. Now, what happens to that one whole? Mr. C, do I just put this one whole right here? Do I put the one whole right here? What happens with this one whole, Mr. C? Well, this one whole, what we're doing with this one whole is we're turning it into, huh, I hate using that. What we're doing this one whole is we're regrouping it, we're partitioning it into a fraction, okay? We're partitioning it into a fraction that is equal to one whole. And in this problem here, to do that, our denominator needs to be three. If our denominator is three, our numerator is also going to be three because we know that if the numerator and the denominator are the same number, that is equal to one whole. So this one whole that we are borrowing and regrouping from is going to become three thirds. Now what happens? What do we do, Mr. C? Well, what you're gonna do is you're going to add three thirds to this one third. 3 thirds plus 1 third gives us 4 thirds. So now we have regrouped, okay? Can we subtract now? Can we do 4 thirds minus 2 thirds? Yes, we can. What's 4 thirds minus 2 thirds? That's going to be 2 thirds, right? 
4 minus 2 is 2. Denominators stay the same, and there we go. Well, what do we subtract next? Are we going to subtract 4 minus 1 or 3 minus 1? We're going to subtract 3 minus 1, right? Because we regrouped, the 4 became a 3. We took the 1 whole and turned it into a fraction. 3 minus 1 is 2, and there is our answer, 2 and 2 thirds. So parents, teachers, make sure they can see the work they're doing, okay? Our goal here is not for them to become these calculators that just spit out numbers. Our goal is that they understand what they're solving. They can see the math. Make sure if they're not seeing it, have them draw the models. Okay, have them make sure they know how to draw the models and then turn them loose and let them try this strategy here, okay? Students, don't you dare be lazy. Don't you dare just do this strategy. Make sure you can see what you're doing. Make sure you can draw the model. Draw the model on one side and then do this on the other and see if your answers are matching up, okay? That is a great way to make sure you are mastering this skill. Take a look and see if you made mistakes, where are they at, where are you confused, ask some questions, and let's try this next one. So let's continue with this strategy. We've got seven and one-fifths minus five and three-fifths. So notice again, whole numbers are lined up, fractions are lined up. So let's subtract these fractions first. One-fifth minus three-fifths. Can we do that? If you have one-fifth, can you give me three-fifths? No, you cannot. So what do we do, Mr. C? Well, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we are going to regroup our whole number of seven. We're going to take one whole from it. So that's going to become a six. And what happens to this one whole? Are we putting this one whole right here? Are we putting this one hole here? Are we putting the one hole here? What happens to it? Well, remember, what we are doing is we are regrouping this one hole into a fraction, okay? Our fraction in this one is going to have a denominator of five. And then what's the numerator? It's also going to be five. One hole equals five fifths. So what we're going to do is we are going to add 5 fifths, and that gives us what? That's going to give us 6 fifths, okay? So can we subtract 6 fifths minus 3 fifths? Hmm, yes we can. What is 6 minus 3? That is 3. Do we subtract the denominators? No, we do not. So when we subtract the fractions, we're getting 3 fifths. 6 fifths minus 3 fifths equals three-fifths. What do we do next, y'all? We are going to subtract the whole numbers. Are we going to do seven minus five, or are we going to do six minus five? We're gonna do six minus five because we regrouped one whole, it became the fraction. So what is six minus five? That is one. So, 7 and 1 fifths minus 5 and 3 fifths gives us 1 and 3 fifths. There you go. Notice, again, we had to regroup because 1 fifth minus 3 fifths, we couldn't do it. The 7 whole, we took away 1, we regrouped 1 whole, it became 6. That one whole became a fraction because we needed it to be a fraction so that way we could add on to our fraction here. So it became five fifths. We added that together. We got six fifths. Six fifths minus three fifths gives us three fifths. Subtract the whole numbers. Six minus five gives us one. Parents, teachers, I cannot stress enough the idea and the importance of students being able to see the work they're doing, okay? Check out that models video. If you're not comfortable doing it, watch the video, all right? Be vulnerable with your students. Be vulnerable with your kids. Show them that you're learning alongside them. That's the cool thing about math, is there's so many new ways to learn. There's so many new different strategies that you need to be the one to model this growth mindset because sometimes, 
this stuff can be a challenge, and that is okay. The more we practice, the better we're going to get. Students, man, do not give up, all right? Just because this may be a challenge right now, draw a picture, okay? Rewatch the video. Practice some on your own, all right? The more we practice, the better we're going to get. Ask yourself, where are you confused? Where are you lost? What didn't make sense? Ask some questions. Raise your hand. Ask somebody older than you. Ask a friend. Say, hey, where am I getting stuck at? Help a friend if they're getting stuck somewhere, okay? That is our goal here at Math of Mr. C is that we're not only seeing the math that we're doing, but that we're helping others kind of develop that growth mindset, okay? If you're ready, if and when you're ready, check out the practice problems video. It is in the link, excuse me, the description below. I've got a couple more I want to try out with you. Also in the description below, you will find an IXL link. IXL is an awesome program that I've used in my classroom to help students get more practice on skills and to master, but also it's a great way for students to track their learning. Parents, teachers, it's a great, great program. Put the kids on it 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. Have them master a skill and move on. Don't have them work on it for hours at a time. It is a great way to supplement the instruction you are giving them. It also allows students, again, to see where they're at, to see what they're struggling with, and to be able to ask good questions. Again, that description, excuse me, that link is in the description. You'll find a seven day free trial. Check that out. If you learn anything new at all, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. That's all I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. C, out.